Let's say we want to find the derivative of the function sine x. One way to do this involves three steps. First, plot the original function sine of x versus x. Second, find the slope of the straight lines tangent to the function at several values of x. Third, plot the tangent slopes as a function of x on a new set of axes. The plot you obtain is the first derivative of the function. This is written mathematically as f prime of x or df dx. So let's work through all three steps. First, we plot sine of x. I have chosen to plot it over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Below this plot, I have left empty space to plot the slope of the tangents. Next, we begin drawing straight lines tangent to sine of x at different values of x and recording the slope of each. Note that at pi over 2, the slope is 0. Continuing to the right, the slope becomes negative, reaching its most negative value at pi, after which the slope becomes less negative, going back to 0 at 3 pi over 2, before becoming positive again. The collection of slopes in the bottom plot define a function which you might recognize as cosine of x. Cosine x is therefore the first derivative of sine x, which is written as f prime equals df dx equals cosine x. You probably already knew that cosine x is the first derivative of sine x, but it is still useful to be able to analyze a function's derivative graphically. We don't have to stop there. The first derivative of the function sine x is just another function, cosine x. We can take the derivative of it in the same way we did of sine x. If we do, we'll have the second derivative of sine x, the derivative of the first derivative. The symbol for this is d squared f over dx squared, which is read as the second derivative of f with respect to x. It means take the derivative of the original function and then take the derivative of the derivative. More compactly, the second derivative can be symbolized as f double prime of x. So let's try this. At the top is a plot of cosine x, the derivative of sine x. To find its derivative, we draw straight lines tangent to cosine x at a series of x coordinates, recording the slope of each, and then plot them in the lower panel. The slope starts at 0 and becomes negative until returning to 0 at pi. As x gets larger, the slope becomes positive, reaching its largest value at 3 pi over 2. It then declines and returns to 0 at 2 pi. The collection of slopes in the bottom plot define a function which you might recognize as the negative of sine x. Negative sine x is therefore the first derivative of cosine x and the second derivative of sine x, the original function. Obviously, this is an impractical way to evaluate every derivative, but it is important to keep in mind that derivatives have geometric and physical meaning. The second derivative turns out to be important in understanding how rapidly a function changes its shape, and that will have significance throughout physical chemistry. Let's look again at the function sine x, its second derivative negative sine x, and their plots from 0 to 2 pi. Sine x is shown at the top and its second derivative at the bottom. Look at the plot of the second derivative around x equal pi, the part that's highlighted in the lower panel. The value of the second derivative in this region is roughly 0. If you look at the corresponding region of the plot of sine x in the top panel, you'll see that the function sine x is roughly a straight line. It is not changing its shape much in this region. When the absolute value of the second derivative of a function is about 0, the original function is approximately a straight line. If you look at the region around 3 pi over 2, you'll see that the second derivative is large there. The corresponding region in the top panel shows that sine x is changing its shape a lot in this region. It is first going down and then going up. Intervals with larger magnitudes of the second derivative result from a function that is changing its shape rapidly in that interval. This is an important concept that has a name. The magnitude of the second derivative of a function is called the curvature of the function. As the curvature of a function becomes larger, the function changes its shape more rapidly and differs more from a straight line. Another way to say this is that a large curvature corresponds to a wiggly function. As another example, consider these two functions. Which function, a or b, generally has a larger value for the magnitude of the second derivative? The second derivative is not the same at every value of x for either function, but generally you can see that function b, the one in the lower panel, changes shape more rapidly and differs more from a straight line. In short, function b is more wiggly than function a. It therefore has a larger curvature and larger magnitude of the second derivative. Note that we have drawn a conclusion about the second derivative of these functions without doing any math. Being able to quickly say something about the derivative of a function from its graph alone can sometimes be quite convenient. And that's finding derivatives graphically.